Schreich mal ein Film hier und jetzt Film mal, schreich oder schreich nicht. Und du sagst es mir nicht, aber schreich aber nicht. In the world of cinema, the feud between director Werner Herzog and actor Klaus Kinski stands as one of the most explosive of all time. We both plotted independently to murder each other. But I didn't want to kill him. Working on five films together over the span of 15 years, they became legends known for their fiery collaborations and epic on-set battles. Did you uh, pull a gun on Klaus? I outgutted him, I outlasted him, I outfigured him, I outfilmed him. Uh, on the other hand, he's very friendly, very nice with me. He's just a pain in the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for the genius and madness of Werner Herzog and Klaus Kinski. Why, why do you work together? Because he's crazy, and so I am, that's fine. It's a perfect combination of the mad people. <laughs> While the two would not collaborate on a film until 1972, Herzog had witnessed Kinski's wild antics years earlier in a German boarding house. I had met him when I was 13. I ended up with him in the same boarding house where he was picked up from the street and immediately uh, wrought havoc. He would destroy everything and, <laughs> and cause chaos. And Kinski had locked himself in this bathroom for two days and two nights. And in his fits of maniacal fury, he smashed everything to smithereens. The bathtub, the toilet bowl, everything. You could sift it through a tennis racket. This early exposure to Kinski's raw, unfiltered behavior, mixed with seeing him on screen in films like Children, Mothers, and The General, would later motivate Herzog in casting him as the lead in the film Aguirre, The Wrath of God. From the beginning of the shooting of Aguirre, there were two pressing problems. One was the budget. Today it seems inconceivable that we made the film with as little as $370,000. Herzog's other problem on the film was Klaus Kinski. How do you and Mr. Herzog get along as actor-director? Not at all. Kinski was not happy with the film's remote location in the Peruvian rainforest. It was very exhausting there, about 40 or 45 hours to get there in the jungle. And we arrived at night without having eaten anything for 24 hours. I really fell in the mud and really sick. And I just screamed out, I said, okay, if this is going to continue, I'm the first one who's going up. After shooting in the jungle began, Kinski's sanity didn't improve. As one night after filming completed for the day, he became so enraged with some of the extras, he decided to address the problem with his rifle. He screamed and yelled, grabbed his Winchester rifle, I mean a real Winchester, and fired three bullets through the walls of their hut, and there were 45 of them crammed together. That he didn't kill any one of them is, is a miracle, but he shot the tip of a finger of one of them away. Kinski's fiery temper continued with the camera crew, becoming enraged when they weren't filming at moments he felt they should be. Glauben Sie, Nein, das auch David Lee hat das gemacht und auch Brecht und Sie werden es auch tun, mein Lieber. While Kinski would go over the top during filming, he did on occasion bring up issues that seemed to be legitimate concerns for filming along the Amazon River. During Aguirre, and I had a, I had my costume weighed about I don't know about 50 pounds, mm -hmm. and they. You just have to defend your, your life. Oh, yeah. So because he is so unconscious sometimes that he just, uh, you know, in the rapids. So without any, uh, any safety or so, if you fall in, you just die. Did you uh, pull a gun on Klaus? Well, there are some, some crazy reports about that. And yeah. <laughs> Herzog himself also pushed the boundaries when trying to keep Kinski in line. At one point, Kinski became so outraged with the conditions on the set of Aguirre, The Wrath of God, that he threatened to abandon the film entirely. He had broken so many contracts, he has done so, such bad things to productions, he wouldn't have cared less just to get out. And he packed everything in a speedboat. And I told him I had a rifle not on me, but by the time he reached the next bend in the river, there would be eight bullets in his head and the ninth one would be in mine. And the bastard somehow understood that it was not a joke. I just uh, outgutted him and I was more determined than he was. And after that, after you after had that After that, that he behaved for about 10 days. <laughs>
he threatened you. He said, I'll, I'll kill you. Yeah. But he didn't have the gun. He didn't have the you gun. You had the gun. <laughs> but you, <laughs> but, uh, but you didn't threaten him. Not to kill him, but I mean, just, I don't know, whatever. I'm the wrath of God. The earth I pass will see me and tremble. Following their intense collaboration on Aguirre, Herzog once again cast Klaus Kinski in pivotal roles for two films released in 1979, Wojciech and Nosferatu the Vampire. Here in this film, everyone on the set, I mean actors and crew included, said, oh my God, this pestilence again, how can you do that to us? And I had to fight against the entire crew and, and had to defend my choice and defend Kinski and, and Kinski screaming every day, throwing a tantrum. But there's one film that has become the most legendary battlefield for these two figures. And that film is Fitz Corraldo. I want my opera heart! I want my opera heart! Set in the Amazon jungle, the film's ambitious demand of moving a steamship over a hill in some ways mirrored Herzog dealing with Kinski's off-screen antics, trying to complete the film without his lead actor self-destructing. Like the filming of Aguirre, a return to the jungle did not fit well with Kinski's personality. You can't go anywhere, you can't go, you can't escape of this stinking camp because you never know when they call you, because you have to be here, because you're paid for, you're on the contract, so you can't just go. It means you are completely captured here. Kinski's explosive temper once again led to frequent conflicts with the crew. And some of his uh, moments of, of ultimate craze or so were triggered when he forgot his lines and then he would look for a victim and he would scream, this pig, and he, mean the, he meant the uh, assistant cameraman, he has smiled, this, this pig has grinned at me and, and things like that. And, and he would always search for a victim. One of those victims on the set was the film's production manager. With the repeated rage sessions from Kinski, Herzog received an offer from some of the local extras to help ease the production's struggles. Towards the end of shooting, the Indians offered to kill Kinski for me. And I said, no, for God's sake, I still need him for shooting. Leave him to me, leave him to me. And I declined at the time, but they were dead serious. They would have killed him undoubtedly if I had wanted it. Sometimes I wish they had murdered him, but... <laughs> My friends, I think we will continue. At times, Herzog was able to find new ways to deal with Kinski's antics, such as when Kinski was furious for being given lukewarm coffee. Herzog tried to let Kinski know they had bigger issues at that moment, as a plane carrying members of the production had crashed. We only knew the plane was down, six people in it. We tried to figure out where was it, can we send out a rescue party. Kinski arrives screaming and steps that close in my face and yells at me for an hour and a half. And I tried to explain, Klaus, there's a plane down. We need to understand what the radio is transmitting to us. And I outperformed him. You know what? I went to my hut. I had one little piece of chocolate, very good chocolate left, and I stood right in his face and ate the chocolate. <laughs> and that was too much for him. He just fell silent. I can see through him like one can see through water in the sink. And I know what's in there, and I know what can be mobilized, and I know how to, how to evoke it, how to bring it to life. But shooting this with Kinski was terrible. He behaved so terribly and and yet I I managed to wrestle a smile away from him. But don't ask me how. The final collaboration between Werner Herzog and Klaus Kinski was Cobra Verde. <laughs> the actor's unpredictable behavior continued during the film's production, 
But Kinski seemed to be burning himself out, pushed into a new phase of madness. Kinski was out of control and he was coming apart. That was the only time he ever physically attacked me. He took a huge rock into his fist and, and attacked me. Normally it would be threats or we would point a gun at each other, a plot to murder each other. It's also worth mentioning Kinski's attacks on Herzog weren't limited to onset ravings. He should be thrown alive to the crocodiles, exclamation point. The most venomous serpent should bite him and make his brain explode. The actor also wrote an autobiography in which his thoughts on Herzog were mentioned a number of times. The huge red ants should piss into his lying eyes and gobble up his balls and his guts. And he should catch the plague, <laughs> syphilis, malaria, yellow fever, leprosy. <laughs> it's no use. The more I wish him the most gruesome death, the more he haunts me. Beautiful, yes. But how real was this level of hostility towards the director? Herzog has in recent years been very open that he in fact helped Kinski come up with some of these harsh words. I helped him with more beautiful, colorful expletives. We laughed a lot over this because he said to me, Werner, nobody's gonna, gonna read the book if I write that we liked each other. Of course, <laughs> we had monstrous, big, big fights and uh, clashes with each other. Why did you work with him again if he was such a difficult actor to work with? Well, there's a simple answer. He's so good and he has such a presence and such an intensity. He, he had very charming moments. It's not that he was all the time and always mad and, and crazed and going wild and creating scandals. There's so much talk about the difficulties with Kinski. Of course he is difficult, but all his madness is, is his real quality. You only have to make it productive for the screen. We, we do have a very deep understanding that probably actors and directors normally do not have. And what a pity that he died, but he's forever alive in, in these movies. Even though their partnership has been largely defined by fierce confrontations and Kinski's over-the-top behavior, both men were committed to the cinematic craft in their five films together, pushing their work to the limit. We go as far as, as possible, so that's why I didn't even, even need to tell him to tell Werner, don't stop it before I break down. He wouldn't stop anyway. Klaus Kinski my best fiend and my finest actor and one of the greatest ever.